Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today we're going to be building a really cool portable handheld soldering iron. You can take anywhere, has a built-in battery, can be charged with a USB port, and can heat up in probably two seconds to solder stuff. Let's get started. These are going to be the parts that you will need. First of all, we have the handle, and the handle is pretty much this piece of wood that has this groove cut out in the end right here. And it's a little bit flattened right here on a 45 degree angle. And this end is curved just to make the handle look better. We also have this piece right here, which is a piece of two by four that has a hole drilled down the middle that is the diameter of this battery. It also is cut on this angle and has smoothed right here. You're also going to need one of these lithium ion batteries. I took one of these out of a laptop battery. You're gonna need a microwave oven interlock switch. You're going to need one of these light bulb sockets. They just screw in light bulbs in. These light bulb sockets just have a screw for light bulbs. We also need one of these, which is a charging regulator for these type of lithium ion batteries. We're also going to need some of these little um, ring wire things and a soldering iron tip. Now this is one of the most important parts because of course it's part of a soldering iron. Now this soldering iron is actually able to fit into this light bulb socket right here. I got this for about $1 at Radio Shack when everything was 90% off. So, it's going to be a good use of it. This thing runs off about 3 volts and we have a 3.7 volt battery. So it'll make it heat up faster and it should make it get pretty hot. Alright, let's get started with this thing. So now you have your battery and your hole. Then after you get this battery inside the hole, you're going to use this little groove that you cut to put this wire through so that way it'll be flush with this. Then you can take this handle and put it on the back like this and that little groove right there will help it fit over the battery. So that way when this is glued down, the battery is flush on this side. This is how we can hide this lithium ion battery so it won't be seen on the soldering iron. It'll make it look a lot better. I'll start gluing this together with a hot glue gun. Alright, so the battery is in place and this thing looks pretty cool so far. The handle fits nicely and it looks good. So now that the battery is in place, you want to solder a wire to the front. So we have both wires of the battery. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this light socket. We're going to stick it over and make sure this wire goes out the light socket through this little groove that I cut into the side. And so the light socket should be fastened on there just like this. After you have the front part mounted, you can hot glue on this. This is the charger board. Make sure the USB port is accessible for anything. Then you want to take the positive lead of the battery and cut a little section out of it with a knife and shorten the wire on the end so that way it'll line up perfectly with the positive of the battery charger jack. This is where we're going to attach our battery charger. After the yellow wire is tied down to one of the ends of the soldering thing and soldered onto the charger board, you're going to want to take the black wire and move that so the black is soldered to the charger port of the charging board. You're then going to want to take this momentary switch right here and solder onto it one of these yellow wires. This is how we're going to connect this switch to power and how we're going to turn on the soldering iron. There we go. It's perfectly soldered. So then we can take this switch, we can glue it on kind of like this. So we can solder this switch wire onto the battery negative terminal. And then you can take another wire and feed it into a spade connector where you can crimp it onto this. After this wire is connected, you can then solder it onto the remaining terminal of the switch. With this, you should be just about done. We should be just about ready to test this cool thing out. Okay, everything is wired together. If I turn it on, there you go, it runs. We can solder everything perfectly. Well, the soldering iron looks really cool and it works really well right now, but I want to add a light to the front so that way it can shine a light on where I'm soldering and also it can tell me when this thing is actually on and running. Let's first take a look at my LED box. I think I want to use a pretty bright clear one. This one should work. 
All right, so this LED looks like it's running pretty good right there. It's pretty this one has a forward voltage of three volts and a current draw of about 12 milliamps or 0 0.02 amps. So now let's calculate what resistor value we're gonna need to run this LED at a voltage of four volts. So we know, according to Ohm's law, that voltage equals current times resistance. So we have our voltage drop because our supply voltage is four volts. So our voltage drop is going to equal one and that's going to equal our current, which is 0 0.012 amps times resistance, which is unknown, so that's gonna be our X. Now, all we need to do is divide one by 0 0.02 and we'll get our resistor value. As you can see, we need a resistor value of about 83 ohms. And we'll put that in series with this LED and the heating element. A 70 ohm resistor seems to work just fine. Now, for the LED on the soldering iron, I used a 68 ohm resistor because an 83 ohm resistor didn't work. And this one works just fine. As you can see when I turn it on, lights up, lights up everything really good. This is what it's like with all the lights off. There you go. Nice. Now that this ray gun looking portable soldering iron is all done, let's put it to the test and solder some stuff on this board. I'm then going to solder these pins on this board right here. Look at that. Those uh, solder joints are almost perfect. All right, let's put this thing to the test again. I'm going to start it heating up right now. See how long it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About ten seconds. Let's see if we can melt some solder into this wire. As you can see, the soldering iron is working very well. Looks good. That's some um, very good soldering on there. Everything flowed nicely and the solder is really shiny, showing that it was hot enough. Now one cool thing about this soldering iron is that it is super efficient. Now the laptop battery cell that I have inside here running it can last a long time. This soldering iron can probably last about an hour and a half on full duty cycle, which means running all the time. And you don't even need it there because you can run it and solder something and then take your finger off and sit it down while you make some new components and add some new components. And you can turn it on again and solder some more. So this soldering iron is really useful. It's good for taking places where it's kind of annoying to have a cord for a big soldering iron because you can get inside small spaces of this and you don't have to have a long annoying cord. You can also take the soldering iron any place where you wouldn't have any electricity or any electricity that can power a soldering iron like this, such as in your car. You can just pull this out, solder something quick, and you'd be done. Now the cool thing about the soldering iron is in addition to it being battery powered, you can charge it with just a normal USB port. So check this out. I just plug this mini USB port into the charger and a red light starts glowing on it. This red light means that it is indeed charging. And this thing will charge relatively quickly. And then once it's fully charged, you'll have a full battery inside there and you can solder for another hour and a half. I hope you enjoyed that video. Hopefully you can build your own soldering iron. If you need to get any parts to make your soldering iron, then I will link some parts in the description and you can use those. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time.